I'm going to start by putting a piece of plexiglass that's about three by six into the spring loaded frame that holds it and that plexiglass needs to be flush with the top edge and I'm going to go over and start printing. I've got this set to a power level of about four and that's four out of perhaps uh, uh, 20 or 30. Very low power level and the objective here is to do all of the text and uh, it, will, it will also do the, uh, the various controls. What I found if I try to print just the text, the program will recenter its print on the, uh, the first piece of text and it won't print the holes correctly. So I found if I print the whole thing both times, I've got a flashlight there to help you see a little bit, um, that it will align perfectly each time. Here it's doing a little bit of text. It's got the word uh, uh, speed going up there. This is an adjustment for the auto reverse controller. There it's labeling one of the LEDs. A little bit more text up here. And you can see the smoke that's going off through the vent at the back. It generates quite a bit of smoke that's exhausted to the outside. Uh, the other thing that's important to note is this unit is water cooled. There's a two gallon bucket of water off to my left that is uh, circulating uh, that water through the, uh, the laser tube to keep it cool. A little more text. Nice little arrow that shows which way to turn the pot for more or less. And a label on that that says time. And this is a real interesting graphic. It's going to put the letters BARC, which is the uh, designation for this uh, blinking auto reverse controller. See how nicely it prints those out. Now as soon as that's finished, it's got a mounting hole to do there, and I think a little bit of text right here. I think it puts my name in, D. Bodner. And then another mounting hole. And another one up there. Now it's going to go around and mark the outer uh, edge of the unit. And you may have noticed that when it was cutting those holes, for some reason it was going over everything twice, and it would do this twice if I let it. But I'm going to turn the power down to zero uh, as soon as it gets around once. I'll stop the camera. I have to do some adjustments to the software, and then we're going to print again and actually cut the holes. So I'm going to turn that down to zero now and stop the camera. Okay, we're going to start it up again, only this time all of the text is hidden. And I've turned the power up uh, to about 15, and you'll see there's a lot more smoke this time. There it's cutting out one of the holes for a potentiometer. Now it's cutting out the four 8-inch holes for the LEDs. There's a hole for one of the pots. And the time potentiometer. And now one of the push button switches. Now you notice it's not going over the text this time, just the uh, places where you need a hole. And again, the reason I did that was to get everything to align properly, allow the uh, outline to always be shown so that it always indexes on that outline. Good bit of smoke. And I'm going to turn this down to zero power as soon as it goes around once. It's going to try to go around a second time, but it's not really necessary.
Okay, that's once. I turned it down the whole way. You'll notice there's no smoke this time. And as soon as it finishes, uh, since the power is down to zero, it's safe for me to put my hand in there. And I will uh, pull it out and we'll take a quick look at the, uh, at the finished product. Okay, just about done. There we go. Spring loaded. Try to keep that in camera. And I can just, uh, you see that frame just comes right off. And the holes have been punched clear through.